Hey, what's up guys? It's Farmer Jack, and today we're gonna talk about mangoes. We are here in mango season, finally. I look forward to this every year in South Florida. It is summertime when the mangoes hit. So we're really like blessed here in Palm Beach County. We kinda are one of the mango capitals of the world. I know India is, it's like all like really like comes from there, like Asia and stuff. But really, we, it grows so well here. People have been messing with mangoes and breeding them in a beautiful way. And, uh, and then we make really delicious mangoes at this point. So it's awesome. There's like all sorts of ones. There's cotton candy, coconut cream, orange sherbet, fruit punch. It's kind of mind blowing. Ice cream, like delicious, delicious mangoes. Really there's like, you could break it down two ways. There's like Southeast Asian varieties. And then there's these bigger, I believe these are the Indian varieties, like the Alfonso looking ones, the bigger ones. So there's like the skinny, nice long ones, like Maha Chinook, and then the fatter ones. So both of them will grow. I've learned from the mango experts, like really if you're in the Western part of not, like I-95, like Western, like the swampier area, the farms, Loxahatchee, um, anywhere where it stays moist, like Everglades, Florida Swamp, plant the Southeast Asian variety, like that skinnier one. If you're closer to the coast, you can mess with these bigger, fatter ones um, that are harder to grow with our moisture here in Florida. So, so they, ha they get some issues with fungus sometimes, like if you water them too much or you, you know, if they like are sitting in a flood zone, they'll get this thing called anthracnose and um, they won't look pretty and then they'll suffer and they'll be unhealthy. They won't be a happy plant producing for you. So really like make sure it's like drains well and not getting so much water. Like every time I plant a mango, I just plant it and I literally say, suggest, hey, don't do anything to it because it's that easy. It's really one of the easiest growers. Maybe star fruit might grow better without any care, but mango really does. It doesn't need anything, which is awesome. It actually won't fruit if you feed it nitrogen and fertilizer. If you feed it fertilizer, it won't fruit. It'll just vegetate and make more leaves. So you wanna kinda give it neglect, so it's like, hey, I need to produce and keep, keep my bloodline going. So really like any time of year is a good time to plant a mango. They just take off. This is a perfect example of the skinny one. People ask me, when's the best time to pick them? I think for every mango, it looks different. But I guess this is the pro way to do it. You go to your tree, you find a nice fruit, you harvest it, and if you see those juices coming out, it means it's not ready. It means wait, <laughs> it's uh, super simple. You can eat mangoes green though, which is amazing. Um, a lot of cultures, you know, pickle them and do all sorts of great stuff. Um, and some are better than others for that. So look up the varieties, like Pram Chimea is a great one. You can harvest any time. It's delicious, you know? So that's a good solution too, because one of the problems people have or just challenges they might encounter with uh, mangoes are the squirrels. So if you harvested them early, you get them before the squirrels do. So at my buddy's grove, he has all these old growth lychees and they're massive and it's hard for him to harvest. It's like a big process each year to go up 30 feet and get lychees. Mangoes are the same way. Sometimes they'll get 40 feet tall and then the only people that are getting it are squirrel people. So you need to try to keep them short. That's what I do. So when we plant a tree for someone, every time I try to communicate to them, hey, you really don't want it to get bigger than a basketball hoop, you know? You wanna keep it in arm's reach of harvest, you know? And not only that, if it grows, if you get it to grow this way and not this way, you can make it stronger for hurricanes and all of those things um, and let more sun into the system. You know, a lot of people don't ever want to touch their tree because they think they're hurting it, but it's actually good for the entire system. You know, it's really good to act in a system when it's appropriate. And I really think, believe it's important to do that with mangoes. As they grow so they don't get so massive, you have to cut them down one day and it costs you all this money with an arborist and 
you know, and then it's making a mess because you can't harvest them. So keep your mangoes small. And it's not a thing where you let it get big and then cut it back. You want to every year kind of tip the tree and keep it small. That's what I do. So you wait, you let the branch grow like 12 to 18 inches and then you tip it and then it puts off three or four. And they do that to make more flowers because with mangoes, they flower at the tip of the tree. So the more tips you have, the more mangoes you have. So definitely tip your trees to do that. Some people won't do that and they'll only have four tips and they'll be 20 feet tall. You know, you're not gonna, it's not optimal. So um, I definitely want to mention that. Yeah, so mangoes, there's not a whole lot of <laughs> maintenance. It's mostly observation and harvest. But yeah, I love these trees. So beautiful. Mangoes, check it out.